morning and we're not doing any painting today we're going to do kind of a little as soon as i get this configured in the right place just bear with me as always this is the land of impromptu so i wanted to do it in portrait but it did not like to do that so just bear with me for just a moment and hopefully we do not have a problem with this and let's see if we can get this thing here okay there we go <laughs> all right uh as always uh kind of uh going by the seat of the pants so i want to do a little update video uh we have a it's sunday we have a game night coming up uh tomorrow and uh, we're going to do a live video and uh if we get some questions um you know what on the last q a that we did if you post on there if you've got any questions uh we should be able to answer those for you guys uh and also if um or you can just put them here just to make it convenient so i'll check in those two places if you've got any questions um related to uh, dba or uh you know uh, we've got a visitor here marty's supposed to come up here so we can add him into the uh, q a as well but so if you got any questions for the three of us uh it should be myself uh mitch and marty we're gonna try to do that um maybe we'll do that first uh, maybe we'll do uh, a kickoff time at, um, we're going to try to do two videos. We've got a, a, a game that we've got planned. We're going to do that live. And then we're also going to have a Q and a part as well. If Marty comes in, I mean, there's always a lot of variables. I mean, guys don't really understand that. Uh, that's why I don't try to plan things too far in advance because you just never know who's going to show up. Um, but um, I just want to do a short video just to remind you guys, hey, tune in tomorrow. Um, pretty close to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, 6, 6.30, something like that. Uh, we should be rolling. Um, just uh, if you're subscribed, you know what to do. But I just want to do a short video to let you guys know that that's coming up tomorrow. And uh, also, uh, I am traveling out of town this weekend. That's why there was no painting. And um, right, right now, waiting on my daughter to do uh, some training. She uh, is taking the lifeguard test. So uh, this is an all weekend thing. So she's uh, right now doing her testing. So good luck. And hopefully you can do that and uh, do some lifeguarding. She's definitely into the um, anything that involves water and stuff like that. So um, that'll be good for her. But anyways, I, I took the opportunity yesterday of, uh, of doing some hobby uh, purchasing and wanted to show you guys uh, what I picked up. So um, I'll go first things I mean, last things first. So I went by a, uh, in town, we don't have a place that, uh, we have a place that has some paints, but they're very, um, they're hard to come by and um, they don't restock and everything. So I ended up going to uh, a game store here in Jacksonville and they happened to have, I they really didn't have anything on there that I was really interested in because it's mostly like fantasy and stuff. But I did pick up this and this is actually a color called Iron Warriors, okay? And you can't tell right here, but it is significantly darker than, um, I believe Lead Belcher is, if you've watched any of my videos, Lead Belcher is the darkest uh, metal that I have. And I usually put Nuln Oil over that. And uh, so I decided to do uh, that instead. And um, we picked this up, and this is going to be interesting to see how it reacts with Nuln Oil as well, and make, be, maybe doing some pieces of armor that are really, really dark, you know, for that uh, 1500s type period they started doing the, um, um, the black treatment uh, on it. I forget what it's called exactly, but, um, but yeah, this is, so I was actually surprised to find a, a metallic, uh, We'll call it an iron or a metal color that is actually darker than the darkest one that I had. So we'll be interested in seeing how this works with the non oil treatment. So um, this is going to be one of those that I'm not going to bring all the way up. I might highlight maybe with the lead belcher a little bit after this. So we're going to put this down, put non oil, um, retouch up with this stuff, and then um, and and then um, and then highlight with. Uh, the darkest one that I have now, which is lead belcher. We'll see how that works out. Very little, so we could do the um, the dark armor. I forget what that's called right now. Um, as always, it's happening even more and more as I get older. So, 
Um, you're just going to have to bear with it, and that'll happen to you too, so you have that to look forward to. <laughs> um, okay, so I went to, um, so there's a couple of really extensive used bookstores here in, uh, in Jacksonville, and uh, one of them is called uh, Chamblin's Book Mine. I've been there many times, uh, but they actually have a downtown location that I never got a chance to go to. So uh, I went to it, and um, you got to get there really early because of the parking, and um, it's um, it's kind of in a rough area. So uh, we got there early before some of those rough people woke up. And uh, anyhow, so we picked up a couple things. It has a smaller selection than the normal one I go to, but uh, maybe you guys will be interested in this. And if you guys have any questions, uh, don't forget to ask on here. We are going. We are doing this live, so uh, let's make sure that's up. Okay, cool. Um, so I picked up. Um, there wasn't a lot of selection. So um, well, there wasn't a lot of selection of things that I was particularly interested in. But um, we're gonna we're doing the World War II stuff as well. And I talked about working on uh, Sherman's recently. So I picked up this Osprey on uh, Sherman medium tank. And uh, let's see if we can adjust this a little bit so you guys can see. This is just to, and just to give you an idea, these are normally uh, like $15 and I believe this one was eight. Yeah, eight, eight bucks. So about half price. Um, this looks like it does have some shelf wear. It is yellowed a little bit. I don't know if you can tell by that, but it is, I, I mean, it, it's in perfect condition. So we've got some color plates here, uh, as always. Unfortunately, if that's all you were interested in, you could probably find somebody who took pictures of it and put it on the internet illegally. But, you know, that's just the world we live in. But, uh, you know, there's obviously other documentation and stuff on here. There's some uh, situation of different actions that they were in and stuff like that. But we are going to work on our Shermans at some point. Um, Maybe not this week, but because uh, Wednesday uh, I'm going to be playing uh, Bachelor there for about a week, so you're going to see a lot more videos from me, hopefully. So that's uh, we've got to finish our rushes before we do that. But I did pick this up um, again. I had to struggle. I was there probably two hours trying to go like, okay, um, I've got to pick out something, and and I really don't like buying things for no reason whatsoever. I kind of want to justify them a little bit, but um, but they did. I did find something to. Um, to have that. So what this is at the, the old downtown location. Uh, I guess it's the older location. Anyways, the one with terrible parking, let's put it that way. So anyhow, Sherman uh, medium tank from Osprey, New Vanguard, $8. Okay, um, and then I may actually have this book, but because I picked up a, uh, I wanna say, you know, Osprey does the individual books and then sometimes they do compilations. Uh, of them and sometimes they do this compilation that they used to do th with uh, military book club which I have some of them on the uh, on from the early 2000s I want to say I did military book club for a couple of years and then I just realized like okay I don't really need all this stuff but anyhow um, so this is one that I may actually have from a compilation of called Romans enemy Rome's enemies but this is the Spanish armies and um, this, of course, is the uh, Book 239 guys. You know, the Iberian, the Celtiberian, and the Lusitanians covered them. And uh, this one is, well, it's even postmarked here what it is, $15. This might have actually been 12 so maybe this one wasn't that good a deal. Yeah, 12 I picked it up. Hey, you got to do business with these people so they stay in business, you know. But there's, uh, uh, there's of course, the color plates that you can find online. Good old Angus McBride. Hold on, let's turn that around. There we go. Yeah, my favorite artist, Angus McBride. The late Angus McBride, let's put it that way. So, yeah. You guys have seen him online or everything. This book's been around for a while. This has got to be from the mid-80s. Um, 86. Okay, and it's been reprinted a bunch of times, looks like. But, um, yeah. So, this was... Um, that's actually an army I've been looking to do, do. I don't have any figures for them, so that is kind of a uh, not a big incentive for me to do and, and buy more figures, you know, to necessarily buy uh, more lead. But if I was going to build the, these armies, I would use uh, Forged in Battle, even though they're prohibitively expensive. Um, not prohibitively expensive, but they're really expensive for those of us in the States, so... There's that. Um, so that's what I picked up at the downtown location. Um, they had probably a hundred Osprey books, but a lot of them were like not Napoleonic stuff. I was like not really interested in that kind of thing. 
but um, you know, it's not really my area. So I went back to the other location as well, um, where I'm used to, and we picked up some other things. We'll, I guess we'll do the non-DBA uh, related stuff first. And uh, I picked up this Bazooka versus Panzer, Battle of the Bulge, 1944. Now it's not necessarily uh, related to Battle of the Bulge. Um, yeah, this is a US, what is this, $20? but it was actually only 12. Again, it's a used bookstore, but a lot of things there are like never even been opened. I mean, yes, they've been opened, but I mean, nothing's even been dog-eared or anything. There might as well be new books, you know? So, um, and this talks about um, some different, uh, what, what I really liked about it is, is that there's all kinds of things that aren't necessarily related to that, but they, they did, it's almost like, you know, infantry versus a tank. So you've got like the S mines and stuff that are on the German tanks for close support defense. So I want to read about that stuff. Um, yes, you can go online and find all that information and, and not buy a book, but, um, you know, um, it's not the same. So um, I like to use a combination of both things. So yeah, here's one of those S mines, whatever. It's like a, a, a smoke grenade. I think this might be a smoke grenade or the S mine. No, this is the, oh boy, it's written really small. Navertike. Waffe. Okay, that's as good as any American can do, I guess. Um, but yeah, so it talks about different things and and, uh, and Zimmerit and all that kind of stuff. Um, anyhow, so pick this thing up because maybe at some point we'll do some World War II gaming. We'll see. We'll see. That's a long road ahead, but I'm. Uh, it's it's neat reading about that stuff that I haven't read in about twenty years. So hey, coffee break. Okay, and. Uh, last one is a book on everybody's favorite general, Hannibal. Yeah. And this is a command series of uh, of these. This is also another, it's like a $24 book. And this one was, I think it was 12 something like that. So you can get good books at a used store that, I mean, I mean a book, used bookstore. I mean, look, this is... I mean, it's brand new. Um, so, uh, yeah, and this talks about uh, just his battles and some other generals or whatever. So I want to do, uh, if you've watched that that battle that we did uh, recently, um, I guess relatively recently, on one of the battles that we did um, between the Germans and Marius, it was a historical battle. Um, I've got another battle to do that involves Hannibal, um, based on a scenario someone else had done. And, um, we'll probably get to that at some point in the future, but there's other battles that happened with Hannibal, um, that aren't well documented because there's a big, there's a lot of missing stuff that happened between Kanai and Zama. So, you know, Hannibal came in through, uh, the Alps came down, uh, Fought a battle of the River Trebia, Lake Trasimene, Cannae, and then he hung around in Italy for like a, a dozen years before he had to get kicked out of Italy. And that time period, the stuff that happened in there was a lot of like uh, guerrilla warfare. And uh, I mean, he was sitting in the backyard of Rome for a, a decade, um, just causing all kinds of havoc. So there's a lot of battles that happened, but they're not documented really well. Um, and that's, uh, I believe, uh, that's the part of Polybius that's, that's missing. And so you've got stuff from Livy and stuff like that. There's actually a book that I came across called, uh, Livy's, um, the war with Hannibal. And it's, you know, the problem with Livy is it's, it's Livy wrote hundreds of years after it happened. So a lot of it could be hearsay. Um, so it's not necessarily accurate, but it still could make for some interesting scenarios. I was going to pick up that book, uh, from him, that particular one, but, you know, I don't mind buying a used book. I don't mind buying a book that's been loved, but sometimes a book is in too bad a shape. And that was the case for this particular one. So that might be something that uh, I will <coughs> get my hands on. There's a couple of battles that uh, happened between Hannibal and another guy that you guys may have heard of called Marcellus. Um, he was not of the caliber of commander of... Um, of Scipio Africanus, but he was a very hands-on guy who went in there and um, and was 
pretty successful uh, until he got ambushed, you know, and uh, and that ended that. But he was definitely a hands-on guy. And um, there's some engagements that happened with Hannibal and him that uh, might be interesting to play out in a DBA size setting, uh, which are always fun because you can do special rules that might be uh, specific to an engagement and not necessarily change the DBA rules uh, as a whole. Like a lot of people, um, when they play the Carthaginian army, they say, well, why aren't the Spanish considered uh, fast blades? And uh, well, you can do that if you're playing a, a, a historical scenario to kind of um, change the effects or make the effects more, um, get the desired result of, of the probability of, of them, how they behave in a battle. Because in the regular list, the Carthaginian list, they're just, they're, they're auxilia, so. That's going to be uh, that's going to be a different scenario, but you can do that in a historical battle. So, uh, just like if you're going to do like Mongols and you don't like the way Light Horse behaves, you know, make special rules for uh, for them in that particular battle that gives them that flavor for uh, that particular engagement. So that's always something you can do. So um, looking forward to doing that. So we picked up those four books from two different locations, um, and I probably don't have to go to any of those places for a long time until they restock because they had a lot of other things, but they just weren't things that, that interested me. But I was actually really surprised with the paint. So if you guys didn't catch up, we're going we're gonna to do this uh, relatively soon. I don't know if we're going to do this on the German Petronels, but... Um, I forget what it's called. It's called blackened armor is what it is. And it was a treatment that was done, I think, to prevent like rust or whatever. And it may have had other benefits as well. But uh, around the 1520s, something like that, they started adding this all the way into like uh, 30 years war. Uh, not everybody, but uh, many, many people use that darkened, uh, the blackened armor. And uh, we'll see if we can get something that's a little bit, uh, some variations on that using this. And this is called uh, Iron Warriors. Okay, and this is one shade darker than uh, Lead Belcher. So we're going to put this down. We're going to put some Null Oil on it and then highlight again with this. Maybe some really fine highlighting with Lead Belcher, which is one color lighter than this. And uh, and see how that turns out. It might be uh, might be an effect that we like how it how it looks. Or it might be terrible and I wasted uh, $4.50. But, you know, um, so be it. Um, I had to go to another town to get that. So uh, anyhow... Um, so that's it. Uh, check out our live video tomorrow. Uh, if you got any questions uh, for us, uh, it should be myself, um, Mitch, and Marty. Marty's supposed to come up. Of course, if something happens and he doesn't come, then Mitch and I will still do the session. But we're going to do a live session. We're going to do a DBA game that's um, a little different. It's a scenario that was designed by somebody else. I'm not going to give that away, but it is uh, something that somebody else put in, and it's a three-player game all at once. So uh, we will give that a shot. Hopefully it's cool. It looks cool. And um, we'll do that live and then we'll do some uh, Q&A as well. So uh, anyhow, you guys have a good Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy the work, work day, unless your name is Mitch and you're not doing a damn thing tomorrow. But, uh, <laughs> but anyhow, we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow uh, evening. Um, I would say by 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. So we'll try to do it as early as we can, but some of us have to go to work. So anyhow, um, we'll catch you guys next time. And thanks for watching. See ya.